We can open to Psalms 19. Do pray for me as well. I think my sciences are following me a little bit and draining while I'm sleeping. Psalms 19, I'd like to just look at really one verse here. Verse number 13. <clears throat> After uh, David here asked for to be cleansed from secret faults, and he goes on verse 13 to say, Keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. Amen. That's really what I'd like us to focus our thoughts on is to keep back thy servant also from presumptuous sins. First he says, keep back. He's asking God to, to restrain or withhold him from these sins. Amen. And certainly God is able to refrain us from sin, if you will. We see this in the case of Abimelech, Genesis 20, verse 6. God said, I withheld thee from sinning. Mm -hmm. That's the same word in Hebrew. If you <laughs> to withhold or to keep back or restrain. And then even in what many call the Lord's Prayer and Matthew chapter 6, he says, Lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from the evil. Amen. Yeah. Certainly God is able to deliver us, to keep us back from sin and wickedness. The problem is we don't often ask him for that help, though. Yeah. Amen. Well, the problem is not that God is not able, it's that we're not willing, if I could say that. We, the flesh doesn't want to be kept back from sin. Amen. The flesh wants to be free to sin. So it ought to be a desire of every child of God to be kept from sin. But he says specifically here to keep us back from these presumptuous sins. Presumption, presumptuous means <clears throat> to presume, to, to assume, to take for granted. When Legally, we say all men are presumed innocent until proven guilty. Mm -hmm. They're assumed to be innocent until we prove otherwise. It can also mean to do something that's without the right or permission. I mean, we do something we shouldn't do. Mm -hmm. That we don't have the I don't have the right to presume what Brother Larry wants to say or want to do for the church. Right. I don't have the right to speak for him. So that's what these presumptuous sins are. When we do with these things that we take for granted, we just assume God's going to do something. And that's what here David is asking to be kept from. So the, the Hebrew word here implies that it's based in pride or arrogance. So we are so arrogant that we think you know, God owes us, if you will, or that we deserve something. Mm. Amen. No, he says, keep back thy servant from presumptuous sins. And this does seem a, to be a prevailing sin in our, at least, American society. We feel entitled even to God's goodness. We feel that he owes us or that he's just going to automatically give it to us. But it really would not be his goodness if that were the case. Right. I do think sometimes we judge all of Christianity by... American Christianity, and if you've ever visited or talked to anyone from other parts of the world, it's not always like here in America. Right. There's a lot of places that are a lot more sincere about their faith than we are. Amen. So we are a very entitled people. Not us. I mean, even trickles down to us as people of God. Maybe not as much so as the world, but. If we're not careful, we'll feel entitled to God's blessings. Right. But God doesn't owe us anything. You're right. Yeah. When we're in this state of presumption, we will not be thankful for what God does give us. The command of the New Testament is, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. Amen. But when we feel that we're owed or deserve something, we will not be thankful for it. 
And there is a difference between having faith and presuming. We can have faith that God is going to do something, that He is going to be faithful to His promises, but we shouldn't just automatically assume that He's going to do what we want Him to do. Mm -hmm. Faith submits itself completely to God and His will, but presuming thinks it's deserved, and even it, that it must be on your own terms. A few uh, examples I thought of how we commit these sins is when we don't pray about them, but just assume that God will work it out in our favor. Mm-hmm. We often just say, well, all things work together for good, and then they love God, so God's going to work it out. And, and certainly He will work things together for the good of them that love Him. It doesn't mean it's always going to be what's favorable to our, ourselves. Right. You know, chastisement is for our good, but it's not necessarily enjoyable. Trials are for our good, but they're not necessarily enjoyable. No, God will work according to His will, ultimately for His glory. Yet, Amen. We are guilty of this presumptuous sin when we just assume God's going to make everything easy and a bed of roses for us. Yet that is the way, at least American Christianity, views God, isn't it? Right. Amen. Everything is just going to be okay. and Certainly in the end it will all be okay. Certainly, ultimately, for the child of God, it's going to work out for our good. But we should not just be guilty of assuming that God's going to do what we want or do what's favorable to us. Right. Just read the book of Job and you'll see that's not always the case. Amen. Really, if you study any life of a servant of God who is trying to serve him, and that's not the case. Elijah, I use his a lot of times. It was not in his favor that there would be a drought for three and a half years, but yet God would be glorified in it. Amen. Yeah. And then he had sustenance there at the brook. The brook gave him water. The ravens came and brought him food. And I think as a Americans, we would say, well, God, we've got a good thing going here. But then when the brook dried up, we would get upset with God, wouldn't we? Right. And then when he told he told Elijah to go to the widow woman, the poorest of the poor in that day, who, you remember the story, all she had was a little cruise of oil and a handful of meal. No, we would have said, well, God, I know you're going to take care of me. You're going to send me over to the king's palace, aren't you? You're going to send me over here to this other place and take care of me. But no, God will work out that which is to his glory, but it's not always to our favor. Amen. No, when we, another way we commit these presumptive sins is when we tell God what he has to do instead of asking him to work. Amen. And what we act as if we know better than what God knows. I think a good example of this is Mary and Martha in John chapter 11. We want to turn there, but when Lazarus was dead and Christ came, he said, they both said, Lord, if thou hadst been here, my brother had not died. Right. So we do the same type of thing, don't we? Amen. God, if you'd have just done this, then this other thing wouldn't have happened. As if we know better than God himself. Mm-hmm. We know what we would prefer, we know what we would like, but ultimately God knows what's best. Amen. And to to presume that we know better than Him is just as much sin as something like lying or stealing. Or we ought to say, not my will, but thine be done. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And what Mary and Martha missed is there was a greater blessing than just healing the sick that was going to be revealed to them. There was a much greater glorification of God and Christ than just Him coming and healing a sick man. Amen. But oftentimes we do the exact same thing. We, we say, well, Lord, why didn't you just do this? Mm-hmm. So another way we 
commit these sins is when we act as if God owes us or that we are entitled. As I mentioned before, this is very prevalent in our society. We act like we're entitled to his blessings or his goodness or that he owes them to us, but God does not owe us anything. You're right. You know, I've seen a, a meme before. It's a, it's a list of all the things that God owes you. It's just a blank sheet of paper. Amen. Same thing goes for society. No one owes you anything. In fact, the Bible says, Owe no man anything but to love one another. Mm -hmm. well, I mentioned Job earlier. Job chapter 2, when his wife had said, Why don't you just curse God and die? He said, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women. Amen. Shall we not receive good, hand of the Lord? Shall we not also receive evil or that which is bad? No. This modern feel good, all health and wealth, prosperity gospel is not the way of the Bible. Huh? Amen. It's the way for the servant of God. No, well, certainly God will bless us and we will receive much good from him. But but we also will receive things that aren't so good. Mm -hmm. but I'll use Brother Junior as an example. I don't think he'll mind. I'm sure COVID was not a good thing in and of itself, but yet God taught you in that. Amen. He showed you things in that that you wouldn't have seen without it. If nothing else, he showed that he is sovereign even over that sickness. Amen. By all indications, Brother. Junior should have been in the ground. Most anybody else his age gets that in there. Right. They don't make it through. We have God in everything who receives the glory. Amen. Yeah. We shouldn't uh, just assume that everything's always going to be good and everything's always going to be enjoyable to the flesh. Right. Because oftentimes the way of God is not enjoyable to this flesh. If you study the book of Hebrews chapter 11, you'll see that many of the servants of God, they had a, a rough road to hoe, as the saying yeah. goes. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Certainly there's great stories of victorious faith there. How that we see how that Abraham... By faith, he left his family in the land he knew and went to a land he didn't know. Right. We see by faith that Noah was delivered. We see by faith that Abel offered a greater sacrifice. We see by faith that Sarah conceived when she was of old age. We see all these Man. great things of faith. And he says, time shall fail me to tell of all these others. But they were, to say they were, Slain, they were sawn asunder, they were stoned. So, yes, faith can give us great victories, but it can also lead through hard times. Amen. Well, how we ought to praise God for His goodness, praise Him for when He does bless us, but also we need to praise Him even in the hard times. Amen. Yeah. What did Paul say? Therefore, I will glory in my infirmities that the power of Christ may rest upon me. Mm -hmm. he, what, I think in the same scriptures he said, When I am weak, he is strong. Amen. Uh, I'm also reminded of Job chapter 1 when he said, The Lord gave, the Lord had taken away. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the Lord can give blessings, but he can take away just the same. Sure. He can bestow much goodness upon us, but yet he can withhold that just the same. Let us never be guilty of thinking that he owes it to us or he's just automatically going to give it to us. We ought to say with Jacob that I'm not worthy the least of his mercies. One other way I thought about this, it says when we think our way or our, our standard of righteousness is better than God's way, that's another thing we're often guilty of in our modern society. We hear things like, I know the Bible says, but... Mm. Right. You know, but I don't see anything wrong with it. Amen. 
In Proverbs 14, 12 says, There is a way which seems right unto man, and there are the ways of death. You're right. Compare that to Proverbs 12, 28, it says, The way of righteousness is life. Yeah. The way of God is never lead to death. You're right. The ways of God always lead to life, but the ways of the world, they lead to death. Or sometimes we just seem to be will willfully ignorant, just so we would won't feel as guilty before God, but really ignorance is no excuse for our sin. Amen. Especially in the day and age which we live and we have Bible, probably multiple Bibles in every home. If you don't have one, you can go down to the dollar store and pick one up for a couple of dollars. Right. You can download it for free off the internet or just go to a website and read it for free. You can well, I don't promote other version, but you can find every version you want to. Right. But we're not, we're without excuse when it comes to access to the Word of God. Amen. If anything, our own laziness condemns us. Like I said, the world, they say, well, I know this is what the Bible says, but I don't see anything wrong with it, or I don't. Well, I don't think it'll hurt anything to do just this a little bit. Well, that, in that case, we're, we're really assuming something that we shouldn't. We're putting ourselves in the place of God. Right. And we are guilty of this presumptuous sin when we do such a thing. Well, I understand some things are hard to be understood. Some things are must be revealed to you, but then there are some things that are very plain in the scriptures. And other than just flat out rejection of them, we can't not, we can't deny them. Amen. Such things as let's turn over and write this down. But in Galatians, Galatians chapter five, verse number. Oops. We get in verse 19 through verse 21 here, it says, Now the works of the flesh are manifest, which are these, adultery, fornication, uncleanness, lasciviousness, idolatry, witchcraft, hatred, variance, emulations, wrath, strife, seditions, heresies, envyings, murder, drunkenness, revelings, and such like, which I tell you before, as also I have told you in the time past, that they which do such things should not inherit the kingdom of God. Amen. There you have a list that's very plain and simple. See, so you get people make excuses for why well, it doesn't mean what it says or that's <laughs> we live in a different time now mm -hmm, Lord but no these sins are just as much sin as they were 2,000 years ago amen you know, fornication that's still even though widely accepted even expected by society is still just as much sin today as it was then mm -hmm. you know, we don't like to talk about idolatry, but we have it a lot in here in America. Yet that's still sin before the sight of God. Yet many, many professing Christians have their own little idols. Amen. No witchcraft. I don't think we have any practicing witches running around, but we don't mind fantasizing about such things, do we? Mm. And when I was a younger Christian, I didn't really understand those things. I would read things like Harry Potter and whatnot. But God was not pleased with those things. Amen. Oh, hatred. I think most of us can say, oh, yeah, hatred is not a good thing. But yet, by and large, the world says it's okay to hate your enemies. It's okay to hate those which do you wrong. But what does the scripture say? To love your enemies and pray for those which persecute you and despitefully use you. Amen. No strife. That's one. We have a lot of strife in this country, don't we? Mm -hmm. well, it's Democrats versus Republicans, liberals versus conservatives. And I, I don't think we should compromise on the standards of the Word of God, but yet strife has no place in the life of a child of God. And yet we many times as Christians actively promoted, don't we? Right. Under the guise of politics. Mm. Amen. 
the Indians, that's one we don't, we kind of wink at it, don't we? We don't, don't even really think about that as a sin, do we? Well, coaches and Indians, they really go hand in hand, don't they? But, and yet, it's kind of what our society is built upon today. The, mm -hmm. You want more, you want what you, what the same or better than what the neighbor has. Right. And, <coughs> yep, it's not necessarily wrong to want things, but when they consume us, when they are the main thing we seek after, then they become sinful to us. Amen. We leave off the service of God to seek after those things. Now, murder, that's something I think we, society generally agrees a whole is not acceptable mm -hmm. until it comes to the unborn. Amen. <laughs> You're right. Drunkenness, that's a, another one which I think Christians will generally say is not a, not a good thing, but yet it's widely accepted, isn't it, in society? Just to be a, well, we're just socially drinking or we're just having a, a beer or two, but yet drunkenness never leaves anything good. Amen. In fact, we're told, be not drunk with wine, wherein, it's, wherein is excess, but be ye filled with the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, there's this is just a few examples of things that Scripture very plainly call out as sin, and yet even professing Christians are guilty of winking at them, or looking over them, or even accepting them. Mm -hmm. Certainly, the list could go on. There's more things hard to be understood in the scriptures, but yet when God calls something sin, it's not ever in our place to, to say it's acceptable, to say it's okay, to say it's, well, that's a different time. Mm -hmm. No, I am the Lord, I change not, Malachi says. Amen. In fact, I think it was Brother A.W. Pink said, God is holy and he will not lower his standard of righteousness. Amen. For us. He gives us our, his standard here in this word and we must abide by it. To presume that we know better than God or that our way is better than God is really to be guilty of sin. Amen. Or when he says to go do it, go do this, and we say, oh God, I think I'm going to go do that like Jonah did. Mm -hmm. We're guilty of this presumptuous sin. Yeah. You know, we all know the story of Jonah. God told him to go down to Nineveh and preach repentance to them. But he said, oh, I think I'm going to go to Tarshish. Mm. We see how that worked out for him. Right. So we can very easily be guilty of the same thing when God tells us to go do something. I know he doesn't audibly speak to us. Yet he burdens us by the Holy Spirit. He places things on our heart to do or to pray about or to or to not do sometimes, and yet if we don't follow that leading, we are guilty of presuming that we know better than God. Right. So keep back thy servant for presumptuous sins. How he said we need to be careful of feeling that we're entitled or deserved or owed anything from God. We need to be careful of acting as we know better than God or that our ways are better than God's ways. We'll, we can't in our own power keep ourselves back from this. That's why he calls out to God to keep them back from these things. Amen. But do we want to, if you want to be kept from sin, you must ask for God and his help. Amen. For in this flesh, you cannot keep it back from sin. You can, you might restrain it for a little while, but you won't restrain it for very long. I don't know. Reminded again of the one in the New Testament. I forgot the scripture, but he says that when the unclean man has gone out of us, or the unclean spirit has gone out of a man, but we return to his house and find it swept and garnished. Yeah. Then he taketh unto himself seven spirits more wicked than himself. <clears throat> right. Yeah. And instead of that man is worse than the beginning. So that's what 
clean up your life will do. Right. Amen. You might clean up yourself. You might look good to people, but if you've never been changed by the grace of God, you'll end up in a worse state than when you started. Right. Amen. But for the child of God, we, even in ourselves, cannot do those things in our own power. We must ask for God and his help. So let us seek God for his help in keeping us back from sin. But if you never have known him as Savior, then you'll never keep yourself back from sin. Amen. Only Christ can save from sin. And certainly he, he does save from sin. That was the purpose of his coming. Amen. Let's close with that thought. But.